This is part three of our review. It's on data types and assignment statements, uh, and variables too, and scopes. So first of all, um, we have a set of true-false questions. Let's get going here. A local variable can only be used in its own subprocedure where it is declared. That is true. A global variable cannot be used in a subprocedure. Well, that's false. Uh, not much point in having global variables. Global means it can be used anywhere, except, of course, where there's a local variable of the same name, which the next question asks. A local variable can have the same name as a global variable, and that's true. Two local variables in different subprocedures can have the same name. True. Two local variables in the same subprocedure can have the same name. False. You wouldn't be able to tell them apart. If a variable is only used in one subprocedure, it should be a local variable of that subprocedure. Okay, this is true. Now, unlike the others, this is a matter of opinion in some sense, but it's a widely held opinion. And um, basically, you're much better off keeping things as local as possible. Okay, now for the next one, uh, there's also some code in the accompanying workbook. Let's just... So, this is a series of assignment statements, and then we're going to ask you the final values of some of these variables. Now, a good way to do these is to actually have a little note that you keep of what's the current value of each variable. So we see x equals 1 and y equals 2, and now we do x equals x plus 2. So at this point, x is uh, 3. Then we have y equals y plus x. So at this point, y is 2 plus 3, it's 5. Now we have z equal x plus y, so at this point we have z is and now we have x equals x plus 1, so at this point, whoops, sorry, x is 4. Now I can answer the questions very easily. So what is the final value of x? It's 4. That is b. What's the final value of y? 5, which is c. And what is the final value of 8? Uh, sorry, Z. <laughs> it's um, 8, which isn't in the list, so it's none of the above, E. And yes, none of the above is a legitimate answer. All right. Now, for the next set of questions, uh, we're going to ask how many values you, you can represent with a given number of bits. Now, in general, if you have n bits, the answer is 2 to the n. So with 1 bit, it's 2 to the 1, which is 2. 2 bits is 4, 3 bits is 8, and so on. I made a little table here for you that shows the first 10, which is about all you're likely to be asked. So how many values can be represented with one bit? It's 2, C. How many can we be represented with two bits? Well, 2 squared is 4, it's 4, E. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, four different values. Or those could be codes for other things. How many can be represented with 3 bits? That's 8, which is C. Now what about 8 bits? I'm going to look at my picture. 256, which is D. Or you can just keep doubling. And that's it. So you should know them up to 10 or have a, a note. This is open book. All right, you see following choices for the next set of questions. What data type would you use for a quantity that is a counting number? Integer. Or long. It's a really long counting number. What would you use for a quantity that is a number for general computations? We use double, which is A. What about a logical value? That's a Boolean, D. And what about quoted text? Well, that would be a string, C. Okay. Now here... Um, we're going, we're asking for the type on various things, and starting off with what type would you expect 
out of this list if you use the plus sign. Okay, so plus could apply to either doubles or integers, and the result could be either a double or an integer. So it would be E. What about the front slash operator? Well, that's the normal division operator, and it results in a double, which is A. What about backslash? That is the integer divide, and we would expect an integer. Okay, ampersand. Well, the point of this one is you have to recognize that it's a string operator, and so C. Okay, now this one's tricky, greater than. Uh, you can do comparisons on numbers, on strings, dates, lots of stuff. But the type of the result, when I say like 3 greater than 5, the answer is either true or false. So that's a Boolean. The operator not, well, that's also a Boolean operator. That is a Boolean operator, so D. Okay, exponentiation gives us a double, A. All right, now these ask the same kind of things in a different way. So what is the type of the expression bar A ampersand bar B? Well, ampersand is the string operator, so you know this is going to be a string. And by the same token, if I'm doing a string operation, we would expect the operands to be strings. What would I expect the type of this expression to be? Well, mod is an integer operator. I expect an integer, so I'll say B. Um, and what would you expect the type of bar A to be? Also B. Now, BBA is very loosey-goosey with types, and it's quite possible you can use other things than integers, but we, when we see a mod, we expect an integer. It's normally used there. And this one, um, again, is asking about comparisons, so it would be Boolean, D. Okay, and that's it.